soft fruit has been an integral part of the Institute's history for several decades now. In the past, our research has focused on developing a greater understanding of genotypic and phenotypic traits and include linkage maps and marker development, this shown a marker for root rot which is now routinely deployed in our raspberry breeding programme. Understanding yield variability and how these can be mitigated, problems with limitations in photosynthetic efficiency and an inability to accumulate starch reserves, so there are breeding options which can look at this increased nestability through stomatal density and biochemical factors. Hyperspectral imaging to identify spectral differences and link these to plant stress. Flavour modelling and consumer acceptance studies for variety development. These projects have highlighted the importance of having a wider germplasm pool, so we're expanding our vaccinium species to include lingonberry, blaeberry and cranberries, and how they may have traits useful for pre-breeding. Growing raspberries and blueberries in hydroponic systems has been useful to study root traits. We've recently expanded into cherry and honeyberry research, as well as looking at traits like to climate resilience and pest and disease tolerance. As you can see, this research leads directly into our commercially funded breeding programmes, of which we currently have nine. Three raspberries, one blackberry, two blackcurrant, one redcurrant and two blueberries. And these are vitally important considering the challenges the industry faces. Challenges and threats to the industry are by no means new, but the recent consequences of both Brexit and coronavirus are likely to be felt for many years to come, especially in terms of labour and movement of goods. And this has already led to some incredibly difficult decisions having to be made. Then, of course, we have the challenges in our climate. Although almost 10 years between these headlines, the weather continues to be a significant contributor to fruit losses every year. We must make our fruit production systems more efficient, sustainable and flexible. And that ultimately starts with plant breeding and cultivation practices, and these should be complementary. The world's population is growing and climate zones are changing constantly, and this is putting great pressure on plants and a combination of science and breeding will be needed to address this. The British market for fresh berries is worth around £1.5 billion and has seen increases in demand of 600% over the last 25 years. With continued research and breeding efforts, the scope for year-on-year -year increases are set to continue. And this can lead not only to a reduction in our reliance on imports, but could also increase our opportunity to export. Many soft fruit varieties are already struggling under current environmental pressures and the cultivation practices they're grown in. So our work has never been more important in the development of high yielding, great tasting and resilient soft fruit for the future. So when we look to the future, we must adopt an integrated approach which involves genetics, breeding, cultivation and technology. And we're perfectly placed to do just that within the Institute and that will be greatly enhanced with the opening of the APGC. High throughput phenotyping in conjunction with speed breeding will let us look for natural resistance to pests and diseases, as well as greater efficiency in water and fertiliser use. Climate change is likely to affect chilling requirement of temperate fruit crops significantly, and the opportunity to meet this chilling requirement will be reduced as the climate becomes warmer. Insufficient chilling will influence flower initiation, fruit coloration, as well as texture and taste. Pollination, fruit set and yield are also likely to decline. So breeding for lower chill varieties will be our priority. Gene editing has the potential to solve real challenges for scientists, growers and the planet by reducing the need for pesticides, energy and water use, for example. Robotics using computer vision to identify and pick ripe fruit combined with machine learning to grade the size and quality will also help with labour shortages. This form of automation can also be utilised for weeding, planting out seedlings and crop monitoring, potentially cutting down on waste and inputs. So who knows, maybe in the next 10 years, we'll be preparing for the launch of the International Berry Hub. Thank you very much for your attention.